subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. Hold up. What it do? What it do, man? What's going down, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me light this camera. I mean, it's our thing up, so, man. What's good, Playboy? Man, chilly, chilly, man. What's the word, man? Shit, it's all good, man. Just maintaining, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, like I said, it's, it's on and a pleasure to meet you, you know? Man, likewise, man. I done heard so much, man. You know, <laughs> I done heard so much. Did I have you on here like this, man? You know what I'm saying? This this crazy. Yeah, man. you can let them see uh it's the real deal. You say you're at work right now, huh? No, I'm not at work. I work at the hospital. I'm in the dormitory right now. Okay. I'm sitting on the bed. I work from six to six. Mm. I haven't been asleep yet, you know? Man. Yeah, I ain't been look, I had to let you see that that seven one three, you know it. Already. <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> That's what it yeah. is. Yeah, man. So, man, how everything been going in there, man? Man, everything is copacetic. You know, it's ups and down. Um, right now, like I say, when I was just speaking to you a moment ago with the courts, everything, I'm waiting to hear something. Now, they denied us on. A, uh, I'm looking up, so when you see me look up, just make sure the police ain't coming. So that's why you see me look up. Right. So. But um, they denied us with this, this like, all right, the best way I can explain it to you, in Texas, if you go to court for trial, they used to be, to have, everybody had to uh, find you guilty of 12-man jury. But out here in Louisiana, in 1860, in 1890, it was 1895 or something like that, they came up with this racist rule saying that they only need 10 people to find you guilty because if you had two blacks on a jury, they would never find you guilty. So for a hundred and some years, they, they had a racist policy going on. In 2018, they took it out saying it was unconstitutional by having it. Well, you have like 1,500 of us still left here with that uh, non-unanimous decision. And they still not want, they don't want to give us no play right now. They, they saying it was wrong the way it was done, but they don't want to give the rest of us play, but they can't do it anymore. So right now, you have a lot of uh, organizations, everything coming to court for us, trying to speak on it because, like I say, it was it was based off of Jim Crow law. Mm. That's what's going on right there. But other than that, man, everything cool, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is, man. That's what it is, well, man. Tell me, man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that South Side, man, you know what I'm saying? And we're going to go all over, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tell me about that South Side, man, coming up in that dead end, man, and how that was, man. All right. take it, I'm going to take you back, right? Take it from way back. I'm going to take it so far back before the Orleans, Kingsgate, the VA, he much had uh, fences. So that's why I'm, I'm going to take you back, right? Um, the village was like you had Kingsgate, Orleans, Esperanza, Summerwood, Foxwood, Pressmont, and the VA in uh, Metal Green, right? So that was the whole village as as a whole. Now we all had to go to school, and it's like I say when uh you had me by Charlotte, her brother Roger Rabbit, that's my partner. Yeah, you know we did it together. Yeah. So. It's showing you that I'm out of Kingsgate, they out the VA. But we all was getting down together, you know? Everybody was getting down and um the hustling was pretty good. We all just grew up there. It's like when you um Kiwi, I don't know if you heard of Little Cripple Junior. All these okay. See all these dudes, KK, Fat Pat, Hulk, Corey Blunt. Uh, Lil Don, T Bone, that was that was we was the younger we was the younger ones, right? That was doing things, but I'm not for sure if everybody tell you about the dead end with my brother, with Scotty, Michael Lee, the real dudes who made the village the village. We was the young brothers, you know what I'm saying? We was the little ones. 
Hmm. You see what I'm saying? When uh, Scott and them had the uh, had Foxwood, I mean, uh, Scott and them had the Orleans and uh, Metal Green. Then they had Summer Woods and stuff like that. You know, it was a lot going on, man. It was a lot of hustling. It was fun, really, because <laughs> yeah, we didn't. We we all fought each other, but we never killed each other. We all messed with each other, and we, not really knowing it, we used to play get like. If you have a slab, and you coming down, I'm gonna get a slab. I'm gonna do it a little better than you. Then the next person gonna do it and push it forward. That's how everybody kept coming up with their calls and call, and we wasn't tripping. We were letting man, I'm I'm getting such and such. Right. So when you so when you so when you first start coming down, well, first of all, when you first start seeing like slabs like really coming around now, like how did three? You, I'm like, like our right before the, the the swingers came on, they were riding the center lines and all that on the cars. You know, they were melting them down. So I don't know if you know Smitty. I mean, not Smitty. They already talk about Little Larry. Everybody talk about Little Larry. I don't know if you. I don't, can't think Little Larry last night. I haven't heard him, but I don't know too, too right. much about him though. But he out of son. That's who used to run with Smith and everybody. Little Larry, one of the first ones called the murder case, right there on Martin Luther King. I think about Doolittle, what, what, what a car wash used to be, where everybody be videoing it. He called his body right there, right? But you would have to really ask him because he speak about it. He done told quite a few people about when he, him, Troy Smith and them, they was all like cranking. You know, still in the car, they were cranking. That we used to call it back then, cranking, right? Okay. And Smitty, I mean, uh, Lil Larry gave my brother some some 83s before everybody was riding. My brother had a Nova, a 72 Nova. He put the 83s on the 72 Nova with the Ricks off in them hmm. and started coming down. But this before everybody got hit to him because Lil Larry didn't like the rims. He didn't like Swangers at first. That's hmm. the first person I saw with him. Now, as I say again, that's coming out of Little Larry mouth with me, him talking. He told Dinky this. Everybody letting everybody know the first person he know that he came down with, and he original cranker, he gave the swingers to Troy. Now that's what I know. When my brother had the swingers on the Nova, we were staying in Crestmont at that time. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then, like I say, then Jimmy Jones, Jeff, and them, they came with the 77 Regal with the canned apple red, the south side red, everybody claimed it now with the gold flakes in it. He stayed two of those from Clyde Drexler on M Tree. Mm. That's the first one that I know of. You know what I'm saying? From that red to 77, then Lynn had the 77 Cutlass. And um, then, like I say, that you had Greg Lacey at that time, you had Greg Lacey. I know you hear about Floyd with all you gang. Yeah, See, for sure. All you gang come in around that same time, but all you gang was they were putting the music in at radio clinic. Him and Greg Relation they were going to radio clinic. That's where we used to have to go to get all our music and shit. Just before and surround by sound and all that. Yeah, that's where they would first learn how to do music. Hmm. That's right off. Oh, uh, it's our six ten, and before you get the telephone roll. I mean, before you get to Almeda, I mean, uh, that's, I think that's Almeda before you get to Little Flea Market by uh, OST and all that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, been yeah. Long, All right. Right over there, it was, uh, they had a place called uh, Radio Clinic. And that's where all you gang them first got their music game up. See, when you started Surround by Sound, them like, man, them years later. Hmm. That's way later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's when he had the regal with the T top, but he had his. We could pull up. All right, thank you. He had it when he could pull the ball out and make it a Hollywood. Huh. Lord had it. Yeah, he can. You would think he just got T tops, but in in actuality, at a Hollywood, he'll take the little ball out. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's <is> crazy. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. so when you start so when you start getting into it, what was the first thing you kind of started coming down in? Well, the first thing I came down in was in Troy Nova's. T. Troy went to the penitentiary in '84 for auto theft. It was him, Lil Larry, Smith, and them got well, a few of them. So it was like Troy 
they had auto theft crews. Everybody started out stealing cars, right? So Troy went to the prison. Me, I get his, I get his noble. I'm young. So but I could drive it around, go through the village and all that stuff like that. So it'd be like me, Pee Wee, um, all the little dudes from out the dead end, you know, we always been in over just riding around, you know, 12, 13 years old, 14 years old, we coming down, mm. you know. Then from then, <laughs> um, my first, my first slab was a 72 Impala, bought it from the dude named John out the V8. You know, I had it pearl white with a, with a burgundy pearl. I mean, uh, it was white with a burgundy like pearl off in it. Mm. I didn't keep it long, sold it. That's when um I came down with the Blazer. Now you thinking about 86, that's when everybody playing the Nissan trucks and all this with the splash paint. We going to uh, uh, Street Dreams on the Southwest. We're doing all the paints and all this. Hmm. So that's why when I'm the first one came down with the Blazer and it was turquoise, white and pink. And I had to sell for money, weed and hoes, right? I mean, uh, coat, I sell with coke. Money and women, cause they had the little pink wave and everything going through it. I uh, I posted up on Shaggy Dog on his little video thing, you know, on Instagram that showed the fifth center, the first one. I put swangers on it, but I didn't keep it on it because I had the rim, I had the eye rock rim, the same color as the blazer. You got pictures of that in the way you can send that to me. Yeah. Yeah, send me, yeah. You can send, send me all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's when you were talking about when they, I mean, when Big Dez were talking about we we racing off in the, in the blaze and everything. Yeah, yeah. That was like, that's when I really started to cut up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knew me because I'm young. At this is time. Well, you already kind of getting in the streets huh? and shit at that time? You had already gotten into Oh, the yeah, I had been in the streets. I had been in the streets. Like, I how was, early you got into that? How early you got like, to the street shit? Shit, about 10, 11. No shit. Yeah, but I, I come up on it a different program. I come up with the dice, everything. My grandfather used to make dice. So I knew mm. how to three card my I could do anything with the dice. I knew hustle. Mm. First and foremost, I knew hustle. I was functional literally. I couldn't read it right. I was dropping out of school. But when it came down to getting a little money and hustling, yeah, I was into all that. Mm. So by the time, I'm going to cover this thing up for a second. Why this police come make her little count? But I'm gonna keep talking, though. All right, I'm covering it up for a second. But so, by the first person that ever put me in a spot that was selling dope was Johnny Junior. He had a spot in um uh, in the Orleans. I mean, in Foxwood. Hmm. So I'm over there with Johnny Junior, uh, Mike, and uh, a few of them little dudes over there with him. I'm hustling. How old are you at this time? About 13. Oh, shit. Sure. Yeah, I'm about 13 years old. Then, then yeah, you talking about, Bond, you talking about Bond, Johnny Bond. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you had Glenn. The pony, uh, pony said Glenn and Johnny Jr. You see, Glenn stayed like five houses from Clyde Drexler Mama. You know, he had the, uh, what was the, no, he had a, he had a Rolls Royce Silver, I don't know, it was a Silver Spur. I think it was a Silver Spur. He had the Rolls Royce in the village and everything. You know what I'm saying? So I've been around all the niggas. That's who, that's who really pushed me. Hmm. I never forget it. It's me, Lil Peanut, be with uh with KK and them, my little partner and them. We all sitting on in a, between Kingsgate. In Esperanza, you go by the village store going to Pearl Homes, the old way for the, you see, I, I've been gone, since I've been gone, they don't open up Martin Luther King. So right. you got to stop. I, I only stopped at the dead end, so we had to turn, we had to turn, come down Martin Luther King, turn right to go back to Pearl Home. But when you turn right, going where the King's Gate at now, and you got all that vacant spot, right there on that first corner, he pulled up in his Rolls Royce and he fat mouthed him. Hmm. Him, he really capped into my how much work he doing. And he the one who really kind of pushed me. Then when Troy and them got all the way on, it was over with. Hmm. You know? 
man. But, <laughs> so 13, you jump out there. So when it when you really start like kind of really getting to it then, like that's when you start getting into the, the blazer and the and the uh oh now you say what you say before that the impala before the blazer. I had the I had the impala first. And that was you know what at, at what age with the impala? 14, going on 15, because I bought the blazer <laughs> at 15. That's when we put our Scarface. At that time, that's when I got all this before Scarface ever put the scene on. So Scar is Scarface kind of like hanging out with y'all at that time? Like yeah, yeah, that, he, he fucking with us, yeah. yeah. And the thing about it, you know, even though when Troy and him was having a dispute and everything, me and him was still talking, I got his number now. Yeah. I'm talking about he'll FaceTime, he done took me all to New York with him, everything, you know, so. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, he ain't never stopped. We ain't never stopped, because I understood what it was. It was just a lot of rhetoric. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was just a whole bunch of rhetoric, and he said some things that wasn't all so-and-so, and it was, you know. Yeah. But I know the picture, because if you really pay attention to it, let me bring you back a little bit. When Starface and Troy and all of them was going and getting into it, you never seen no real beef nowhere because everybody were partners way before then. Mm -hmm. There were number two record labels way back then, Rap a Lot on the North Side, Short Stop Record on the South Side before anybody else. And so they was all partners. Everybody was cool. So when that beef came along, they were just talking a lot of more rhetoric. That's mm -hmm. why you never heard no gunshots, no fighting, no none of that. But yeah. them dude were men, first yeah. and foremost. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's why, until the, today, you know what I'm saying, face and trying to make still communicate. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, I already know. I already know. Man, yeah. Uh, uh, so, man, okay, when your brother gets to the label, do you ever try to, like, rap and shit, or you was just still kind of just, like, man, I'm on some streets. Man, I'm running, I'm I was cool. more on the streets, bro. I'm, out, I'm, out, I'm messing with him, but I ain't. What? <laughs> no, indeed not. <laughs> At that time, think about it. Look, dude, and face him, I had to tell you, Mike, Mike D never tell you. Me and one of my best little friends named Chris Gilbert, right? Baby Stump, he got killed. Uh, we out, we need some, we need some time. We need some voles. I need some voles. He needs some voles. We out hunting. We go cranking. We riding. I go see a, a, a limousine. Hmm. With some voles on it, steal a limousine, boom, we got like two hundred off of them. But they're gonna tell you about how we burnt the safe up trying to get all the money out. That's what Mike <laughs> Dina. So you looking at a dude at fifteen years old, and all Mike Dina gonna tell you. Everybody tell you, Troy. I tried to buy a Carnese Rolls Royce at sixteen for my sixteenth birthday. No shit. Yeah, that was my whole thing. Cause we don't hit a lick. We we up. Everybody up now. Scarface out. Everybody up. But. Hmm. That's how the blazer come about because Troy and them say, I'm going to put too much heat. My mama and everybody talking about it. That's all I ever wanted with that car because Glenn had that other Rolls Royce. He fat mouth and I wanted a Rolls Royce. Yeah, You ever think back like, man, I was just trying to move too fast, man. I, <laughs> I was way too I was way above my time, but I didn't know it at the time. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's how the blazer come about. Cause mm. I couldn't get that. Then um, I bought Troy Cadillac from him and all kind of stuff. I don't know if you know Lil Kenna Wade. Nah, uh -uh. you might have heard it. Okay, he was another one of my dead end too. Uh, he got killed in a car wreck, man, a couple years ago. But he had a Canary Yellow Grand Prix. I bought his Grand Prix around that same time. Put some four. I mean, I had some threes on it. Come down with the hot. I mean, with the uh, with the T-tops and everything, you know, it was just like, it was just fun to us. It was dangerous, but it was fun. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, I'm living from the village to South Acres. I'm living on Richfield. So that's how I know facing them, everybody. I know everybody, me, Quincy, Cornell, Toast, everybody. Kilo, I was going to ask you about Toast and Cornell and all of them, if y'all already what? together. We all ran together. The first job Cornell X ever had that didn't keep too long, him, me, Troy, they had some white boys come in the neighborhood to come pick us up, asking for a donation. We used to go in these rich people neighborhoods and ask for donations and stuff, hmm. right? It was some kind of little scam they were doing. Troy quit like the first day. 
Cornell. Now, me and Toast did it for a little while, then we just stopped too. But we live like, I lived on Rich, I lived on Richfield, they lived on Holloway, the next street over. So I'm never, I'm talking about when, when Quincy first got his rigor. Hmm. I'm there when Quincy, when the police, he Quincy coming off, uh, I forgot the little street going in front of Watkins on Cullen, when the, the, he going past there and the police racing and they hit his car, knocked him all the way out his T-top, messed him all up, yeah. Yeah. Yo, I'm there, I'm talking about them all the way. They, you can't say that end without saying little Michael Jermaine. It's impossible. Hmm. It's like impossible. Man. So then what ended up, like how you end up, uh, you know what I'm saying, what ended up leading to you having to go in and all that shit? Like you just started just all traveling? Right. No, but this is what it was. I'm always been traveling. I I stayed in Houston, but I traveled. The first flat, the first place that we ever hustled was in was Port Arthur, hmm. right? Before Port Arthur was known, it was, they were calling me short, they were calling Troy Short Dog and me too short. Hmm. Right, we hustling in there. We on Short Texas Seven by Miss Emma's. We in there. I'm talking about before UGK and then was out. That's when they had DJ Bird, David Grogan was a DJ. My auntie and David Grogan and them lived on the same little piece of land. That's how I know about them before they even much ever got started. Because I'm in Port Arthur and hustling. We getting it. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? From Port Arthur. Uh. I went so to that's what y'all, so y'all, so that's what y'all was going, you know what I'm saying, at that time when y'all was hustling shit, you and Troy, y'all was taking a yeah, trip. Yeah, that's, we were taking a trip to Port Arthur and stuff, because that's, that's like the last time me and Troy been together hmm. from the Port Arthur rooms. But at the same time, I was still going to Louisiana, yeah. I'm about to cover it up one more time, this lady coming by. But I started going to Alexandria. I'm the one of the first ones that went to Alexandria. You know, everybody know how Alexandria is. You know right, right, what right. Alexandria about, but I'm finna tell you, I don't know how. Are you familiar how it started though? No, I don't know how it started. I just know it's all right. Just, I know it'd be going all right. Todd Tanner came down, he got a little cousin named Henry. We all stand in the village, right? We all in Kingsgate. So Todd get Paul, Richard Paul, do Henry, Dave, Alvin, uh. No, KK, KK didn't win there because KK got locked up by then. Uh, Marlon, Marlon Newsom. Um, it was like five or six dudes he wanted to take to Alexandria, who we professional dope dealers. He yeah. wanted to crank his little spot up. Yeah. So I'm out there. They finna leave. I said, well, I'm going to come right back. I, I, I leave and I come back in the blazer. They gone. But the only thing they telling me about it's McDonald Street, Alexandria. I've never been here before, right? Alexandria. It's all they talking about McDonald Street and Alexandria. So they leave. I'm mad. I pull up on I pull up at the uh, Shell station on Belford and Martin Luther King, get some gas. And just my luck, I see a lady with some Louisiana plates on there. I say, Do you know what Alexandria is? She say, Yeah. I say, You don't mind? Can I follow you? By myself. I follow Lady Alexandria. She showed me where to get off at it. And so I went down there and um, it was on Mac Arthur Drive. Hmm. I go to the Ace Audio, I go to sleep. So that morning when everything wake up, I asked people in the scope, I'm like, do you know where McDonald Street is? So they pointed me to wait. I pull up in front of, I pull up where everybody at. I'm jamming in the blaze. Yeah. Like, how the fuck you, they like, how the hell you? I say, I know two things, Alexandria and McDonald Street. Hmm. And so that's when everybody start to hustle in McDonald's and Alexandria. So that's how that first run of the whole Alexandria run. And what year? What year this is? Eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty seven, like eighty seven, eighty eight. Hmm. And that opened yeah. up the whole, the whole Alexandria. That, that, that's the first crew of people that went to Alexandria. Hmm. I mean, Alvin's still down there. You know, that's the first crew. No shit. Town and brought us there. Yeah, yeah. Because he was ready, you know, he ready to get his hustle on. He knew we were professional little hustlers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to earn our stripes in here, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so, so that yeah, was I'm like gonna... my, huh? No, no, go ahead, my bad. That was my first run with 
Louisiana. Then I started going to Shreveport. Mm. So got some stuff up there in Shreveport, back and forth, you know? Yeah. So then you know, um, I was taking them PA, uh, them PA runs though. Oh yeah, that what? Yeah. Oh man, that was it. That was it. That was the the PA run, me and Troy. Oh yeah. yeah. You had a dude named Compton. He from LA. He from Compton. Him and his little brother and sister, they was out there. And the dude named Don Juan from out of Fifth Ward, Troy Partner. He was like the first one who really put it down. Like I said, my grandmother and them lived out there. I got people out there in Port Arthur. So mm -hmm. we go there, we hustling, and then we go on uh, Short Texas and uh, Seven in Texas where everything at, where it used to be at anyway. And you had Miss Emma's was the little spot that she was a soul food lady. We used to pay her the whole lot of money while we sit out there and hustle. Mm -hmm. So all the little dudes who came up through PA and all that, and they really come through us. Mm -hmm. uh, around that same area, because at that time, we were bringing the work up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like I say, uh, UGK, they DJ with DJ Bird, David Brogan at the time. You know yeah, what I'm DJ saying? Bird. I, know Bird. I know DJ Bird, yeah. Yeah, I've been knowing him for you. I swear to God, hope I never get out of here. I remember when his daddy first got him in SP 1200s. I'm huh. there. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Huh? That's crazy. I'm there when Mr. Grogan first got him his turn tables, man. That's Real what's talk. That's what's up, man. You know, and I like I say, I, I've been around, but then when I got hit, I've been gone so long. So it's only the old heads that really know me. All the youngsters don't know me, but the story can't be told without me playing some part off in it. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Man, so when they uh, what how, when you end up getting hit, did you did you know that it was finna go down like that, or that shit like uh, or they caught you by surprise type shit? No, man, I got caught up on bodies, bro. I mm. got caught up on two bodies, man. Oh, um, I didn't, I can't get too much all the way into it because I'm still in the court. Yeah, yeah. But it was a fluke, man. Real talk. At the end of the day, that wasn't my lick. Yeah. that I got caught up on. I yeah. just didn't know how to get back to a destination. Yeah. And but I didn't know how to get back to the destination. So I got back in a vehicle with my peoples and got caught up. Yeah. But that wasn't my run. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't really get too yeah. much in it because I'm in the course actually right now. Right, 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 right. Nah, for sure, for sure. Nah, I mean, you know. You know. It'll be a time that I'll be able to really just go yeah. hard into it. Yeah, yeah. You know. Nah, nah, nah. It's all good. I completely understand. Like I say, boys got to get yeah. up. Us, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm mad at too, boy. I'm trying to shake this spot, you know? Yeah. But um, it's like, when, you know, when I, when I, when Pat and them first start to blow, I'm in Angola, right? And I'm listening to them and I'm just smiling like, man, these are my partners. Yeah. And I'm watching, I'm listening to everybody. And I'm listening, I'm listening. You got uh, DJ Dolby D, he out here, he jamming everything, you know, as you see at this time, you know, then he, so it's like, it was, I don't know if the dudes understand it, that for the ones who locked up, they, all the rappers, you know, everybody was talking about Houston, they was our motivation. They mm. kept us focused, you know what I'm saying? When they talking about slabs and, streets and stuff like this it because we're away from it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it was like I I never got caught up in the, the you know the little beefs and all that what was going on. I just respected everybody from what they was doing and putting the city on, you know, because to say that I I come I'm a part of the original of it and to see where it's at right now is like it's real big and watching, you know, sitting on the sideline just watching it. Yeah. you know, blossom and grow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was real big for me too, you know? Yeah. yeah. Nah, I mean, that's crazy. You came up with everybody. You know, that that dead end is such an influential hood in this whole thing, man, because it was so many people, like you say, Fat Pat and Hawk, and then, you know, the whole slab thing, just the hustling and everybody getting money over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was just so much. But, you came you know, I'm thinking about it, it, man. When you see, when that... When you see the picture of Corey Blunt uh, sitting on side the 68 in Palo, right? 
I had a blue drop top, six day in Pala. Mm -hmm. I sold mine to a poppy, had the smoke shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's I sold my six day to poppy oh, with shit. the swivel seat, tuck and roll, everything, hydraulic. It was number three at the time. It was me, Corey Blunt, and Quincy, the only one. Quincy had a six or six. I think 65 or 66. That mm -hmm. were number three of us over there with the hydraulics first and foremost. Then everybody else started to come along with it. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's crazy, man. Yep. I might like, <laughs> <That's laughs> we had to see I had a six day convertible on yeah. juice with the swivel seats off in it with you know everything. And I sold it to Poppy. <laughs> that's crazy, man. And then yep. the, so the blazer, that was that was yeah, you gotta see me. You gotta that see was before. Me. I'm like the blazer was like. Everybody talking about Blaze, because that's the one that they just would every there was like because nobody hadn't had it. Yeah. You had MC Run C and all them dudes talking about they riding down the street and Nissan trucks and all this type of stuff, but nobody wasn't seeing it. I brought it to them. Yeah. I brought it to them. Yeah. Yeah. I brought it. Then Lil Dushan, Lil Duke, uh Paul Chevy's brother-in-law, where well, he got a baby by Paul Chevy's sister. He come with his little S10 truck with the uh with the with the bed lift on there and he got the little jacuzzi in the bed. So this he was living in Pearl Home. Hmm. So this was all was coming around at the same time, you know. Then IJ came with the blazer with the with the uh with the scoop on it, with the swangers, and it was over with, man. Hmm. By that time I had uh I had took the blazer, I went to Ike, I got it sprayed. Blue, and I went to Oscars and got my interior done all tight white with the blue pipings, mm. and I had uh I had some uh some momo some, uh some momo blocks on there, riding it like that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's too. Uh, you gotta send me pictures. Of all that. <laughs> I gotta see. They yeah. can me out there too because they told all right, me. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, bro. Uh, yeah, we gotta catch up again, man, for sure. Yeah, we can get through more of this because there's way more to this, you know what I'm saying? I really you know, know, like I said, I'm there with the Bubba Twins. Everybody they know me, bro. Man. Big Dez, everybody. They they know the kid, man. Yeah. I they really, know the kid. I really like I say, we, they're just part of it. We got some more to go, you know, whenever you get a chance to get back at me, man. That's a bit, bro. All right, man. Peace and blessing, man. Job blessed, bro. I'm ready. All right. Subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man.